All right, crew, here we are, math lesson number two. So last time we were looking at fractions and decimals when we were cutting our chocolate bar into tenths. This time we we're looking for hundredths. So instead of the chocolate bar, we're moving on and we've got a piece of cake. Well, we've got the whole cake actually. And we don't want to take the time to draw a cake every time. So we're going to use this handy uh, base 10 block. So this 100 square is our cake cut into 100 delectable pieces of cake. So if we cover up this cake with one little square, if we cover it up one piece of the cake, the fraction that we get is one out of 100. Okay. And then to figure out what the decimal is going to be, we're going to go back to that place value chart that we made showing what each of the columns are. So we look for the one hundredths. Okay, here we are. So it is two spots to the right of the decimal place. So how do we know that one is two spots to the right of the decimal place? Well, we use our good friend, Zero the Hero, placeholder extraordinaire. We have zero full cakes, zero tenths of a cake, but one one hundredth of a cake. All right. Now, what is, let me erase that. And instead of covering it up with one of the little cubes, we cover it up with a 10 stick. So now we're covering up 10 pieces of cake in one fell swoop. So our fraction, 10 out of 100. Now, we could also say that this one 10 stick, there's, it takes 10 of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, to cover this cake all together. So we've got 1 out of the 10 that we need, or 1 tenth. So when we go to write the decimal, we're going to end up with the one in this place. Okay. Um, and the reason is now we have a two digit number, but we can only ever put one digit in each column. So once the column gets past nine, once you get up to 10, the number on the left has to bump over into the next left column. Right? So we would, we could still say that this is 10 one hundredths, or we could say it as one tenth. Either option would be correct. All right, what if we have a different amount covered? What if we've got three of those covered and we use four of these happy little cubes? Okay, so to count how many squares are covered, we can count by tens to start with, 10, 20, 30. And then 31, 32, 33, 34. So our fraction will be 34 out of 100. When we go to write the decimal, we can do it two ways. One is we know that each of these 10 sticks is 1 tenth. There's three of them. So there needs to be a three in the tenths column. And then as leftover little hundredths, there are four of those. So you'll notice we ended up just taking the number 34 and we wrote it to the right of the decimal part. So the second digit ends up in the tenths column and the smallest number, or the number on the right, not necessarily the smallest number, but uh, the smallest amount of the cake ends up in the hundredths column. So we could say this as 34 uh, hundredths um, or we could say it as three tenths and four hundredths. Let's try a different one. Three of those. Add a couple of these. Okay, so this time I've got five of those. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 still out of my 100 pieces of cake that are covered. And we also know one, two, three, four, five, we've got five 
out of the 10 sticks that we would need to cover our whole cake. So the decimal, we've got five tenths um, and zero left over. Okay, or we could say 50 hundredths. Now you might be thinking, hey, wait a second, do we really need all of those zeros? And the answer is, no way. If you're a lazy mathematician, you don't need to write all those extra zeros. You could also represent this number just like that, 0.5. Um, and that would be correct because any number, if there's nothing written to the left of the decimal point, it's assumed to be a zero. And it doesn't matter how many zeros we add on the right hand side, it's not going to change the amount of stuff, right? Zero hundredths, zero thousandths, zero ten thousandths. It doesn't matter. It's all zeros. It's not going to change how much cake is there uh, or how much cake we covered up. All righty. Now, what if we have this one? 10, 20, 30, 40, plus 1, 41 out of 100. So the decimal, we know we can just take the number, as long as it's a two digit number, we can take the number and put it after the decimal point because there are four tenths plus this one extra one hundredth. So it works out that way. Okay, one more. What if we cover up our cake with all of these? So we have completely covered up this cake. So our fraction, we've covered all 100 pieces. So we have 100, 100. And hopefully remember from our study of fractions that anytime the numerator and the denominator are the same, we have what amount of stuff? All right, hopefully you just said one whole, Miss Hughes. Absolutely, we've got one whole. So we go to write this in decimal form. Well, we've written one before, and then we just add the decimal point and fill in the other zero. So we still have our 100, just like we did here. The first two on the right fit in here, and then we have to put the decimal point before the third digit there, because what we're representing is one cake that is completely covered, one whole cake. 100 one hundredths is the same thing as one.